today we're moving on to the juicy, tasty part of the project in our Midtown Reno reveals. What part is that? It's the heart, the hub, the center of action and where it all happens, my friends. It is the dining room and kitchen. In every renovation project, there's a reason it all starts. There's a catalyst for the mess, the dust, the chaos, and the expense that follows. In this case, it was the kitchen. They've been living in this house for 30 years. They've had this kitchen for 30 years. After 30 years of living in this house, my clients couldn't take one more day. So they called me and they said, Sarah, please, please come and help us reimagine, reconfigure, and revitalize our home. And that is exactly what we did. And out of every space in this house, I think the kitchen dining room is the one that experienced the biggest change and that really moved the needle for the overall experience in this house. Because I have to tell you, every time I walk in, I have to remind myself what it used to be. We used to have a dining room and a kitchen that were completely separated. Why do I love my job? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm addicted to big transformations and you'll have to agree with me, this is a pretty big transformation. It was dark and it was two separate rooms. The dining room was separated from the kitchen and my clients, the lady of the house in particular, is an amazing cook. She's a fabulous baker. She's a natural hostess and entertainer. And she was making do and making it work in the space she had, as we all do. But she had a dream of something that would work better. And you know what? That was my mission. How could I create a kitchen dining room that opened onto the living room and really acted as the hub that they wanted in this home and that would work moving forward? And so here it is. Here it is. Okay, let's start with the dining room. So the dining room, we really changed very little in the dining room in terms of architecture. Well, we changed a few things. We took out a wall. That's a pretty big game changer. Look at this. Wide open space. We replaced the door and added a big new sliding door. We replaced the floors. And then after that, it was paint and decorating. And so I just want you to be inspired for a second by the magic of paint. And I know that every time I suggest, hey, let's take that old wood paneling and paint it, I know there's a huge number of you out there that go, no, Sarah, do not do that. Do not engage. And you know that I'm gonna paint it. And fortunately, my clients were completely on board and it was actually one of their requests at the very beginning was that they wanted the dining room to feel less dark and more contemporary. So what did we do? Well, we kept all the existing paneling that was here and we painted it. And I think it becomes more of a showpiece now. I actually think that traditional paneling when painted looks like contemporary texture. Are you with me? And it acts as a fabulous backdrop to layering in more contemporary furniture. So now let's talk about what we did in furniture. Well, in the lighting department, we went with satin brass. I'd say this is a classically inspired chandelier that has a really restrained, contemporary, elegant, sophisticated touch. I'm a big fan of this fixture and how it looks in the room. We paired it with the matching skinny little candlestick lamps that sit on the sideboard. I'm a big fan of this sideboard because it sort of sets the tone for the room. It has a ceruzed gray frame, it has creamy white lacquered doors, and then it has some soft brass accents. It has lots of storage. It has a beautiful large top surface. So if you're entertaining and you want to set out a buffet, you've got lots of space. Look how it looks with these candlestick lamps. So if you don't want to introduce candles, you can think about candlestick lamps because you can turn them on and they glow. And the symmetry of these candlestick lamps sitting on the sideboard, floating symmetrically against the chandelier in the ceiling, this all works. Why am I talking so much about lighting? Because lighting matters. It sets the tone for the room, the atmosphere, the ambiance. So never overlook it and make sure that when you're 
addressing your budget, you leave that extra, a little bit more than you think you need for lighting, because it will make a big difference. Now, the table. The table is, oh, the table is so good. The table is really the showpiece in this room. And it all started with a piece of stone. I went shopping with my clients the other day and I bought the most amazing slab of marble that we are gonna turn into a dining table. We found this spectacular slab that embraces the color palette of the entire main floor. It's called Arctic Cloud and it is a leathered marble. You just need to look at the colors here. I mean, grays, blues, creams, it's all natural. The texture is fantastic. So we did a big oval. It measures 52 inches wide by 96 inches long. It can seat eight, 10 in a pinch if you got a crowd coming and you want to get cozy and elbow in there. And I think this table really makes the room feel bigger. I almost used this table base a few years ago on a hotel project and I always wanted to order it and it can be ordered just as a base. Look at this fabulous, it's like a hammered brass base and it's an elegant pedestal, it's got texture, it's contemporary, it's quiet, but it has that glint of the brass as well. We've used a rug on the dining room floor that ties to the living room rug same colors but not same pattern it's soft underfoot it's entirely grounded in neutrals and then the table is surrounded with dining chairs that i designed yes many of you will recognize this chair you've seen it before still i think my all-time favorite dining chair it's called the nick chair and we've covered it in a linen-based fabric that has a really subtle pattern in it. And the great thing is, if you want to go for a light neutral, but you want it to also be durable, instead of choosing a plain fabric, think about something that has either a woven texture or a printed texture like this, because it'll be more durable. And when I say durable, what I mean is forgiving. In case anybody gets anything on it, it won't be so noticeable. Fun story about the art. The art was done by a longtime friend of my clients. And they started out, they had a portfolio of images here for me to go through. And we had so much fun because we flipped through all these different options. And now their dining room is filled with these whimsical, I mean, are, I don't know if you'd call them whimsical. I think they're modern, but yet they have this personality, this whimsy to them. I think they look fabulous. They're quiet, yet they add that contemporary edge to the room. So that is the dining room. Now, shall we, did I forget anything? I didn't forget anything. Okay, now we move to the kitchen. Oh my gosh, look at this kitchen. Okay. Every time I walk in this house, I get excited because I can't believe, I mean, I can believe, but I'm still so amazed at the transformation that happened here. And this is why you renovate. This is why you endure the chaos and the mess, because at the end of the renovation, oh, and the expense, at the end of the renovation, you get to live in a completely different way. You get to use your space in an entirely different way. And speaking of space, this kitchen feels at least twice as big as it used to feel. It has incredible flow. It has so much open space. It has two seating groupings. It has multiple work surfaces and stations. It's flooded with natural light when it used to feel dark. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So let's just talk about the big design decisions here. So decision number one, <laughs> well, really not even a decision, it was more like a foregone conclusion, and that is the removal of the wall. We did not take out all the walls on the main floor. The only thing we did was remove one section of wall, and from there, the entire main floor changed, improved, got 100,000 times way, way better. So once you've done that, how are you gonna lay the kitchen out? It always helps to start with a list of what your wishes, needs, wants, dreams, desires are. And that is the most important thing a designer needs to ask you, the client, or you need to ask yourself, if you're gonna be both designer and client, is what do you want? So you've heard me say this a thousand times. I will say this about every single kitchen. A kitchen is like a puzzle and all the pieces have to fit, and that is always my mission. So here's what we did. We thought about putting an island in here. 
We'll do a big island here, mission control, right in the center. We tried the island going lengthwise. We tried the island going widthwise. In the end, it was kind of a pivot at the last minute. I said, actually, hold on. One more thought, what if we did a peninsula instead? By putting a peninsula here, it bisects the dining room and the kitchen. It offers space for three counter stools. It offers storage on the dining room side. So this is a great place that you can store the napkins, the placemats, the extra cutlery, candles, you name it. Anything that you might need for the dining area can be neatly stowed in the end of the peninsula. We did the peninsula with quartz. This is pure white quartz from Caesar Stone. And you'll see it has a sleek waterfall edge. Underneath the peninsula, we've done a little batten detail that runs horizontally, just a tiny bit of texture here. And the whole peninsula section is done in a smoky, bluey, charcoal tone that corresponds to the color of our gorgeous floors and our dramatic backsplash. So that's a whole lot of things to keep in mind all together, but it's important also when you're thinking about your color palette to make sure that you have something in mind about where you're going. You know that often I will leave the selection of the backsplash until the end as the jewelry, the last finishing touch. In this case, we chose the backsplash first and then all decisions for the kitchen kind of flowed from it. The backsplash is made of a combination of three materials. It's this fantastic contemporary basket weave design and it features Carrera marble, Bardilio and Thassos. And so we've got gray, we've got smoky blue and we've got white. And that is what you will see sprinkled throughout the rest of the kitchen. So the peninsula comes out long from the wall. At the end, we have upper cabinets, we have a full height pantry, we've got the microwave in here, the sink, the dishwasher, we've got storage, three stools, and dining room storage. This peninsula is a workhorse. It is a long run of counter space, but also we've got terrific big open circulation area from the dining room into the kitchen. So that was a big focus here to make sure that this space would work for entertaining. Now let's look at the cook's hub. So we made some pretty big changes. We closed up two windows. I mean, there's a controversial thing to say as a designer. I wanna make you this big, gorgeous, bright kitchen. Now, let's start by closing up two windows. Most clients get very concerned about that suggestion, but you can see now how the light is flooding in. We have a south facing bay window. We have a northwest facing big patio door. So the light just comes streaming in here. You know what we don't have anymore? We don't have sight lines to the neighbors. And to me, that is a huge bonus because the kitchen became so much more private and also so much more functional. And I won't keep a window just for the sake of keeping a window. If I can get better function by closing that window, I am more than happy to do so. So we had a few funny quirks. And one of the ones I want to point out is over on the range wall elevation because we had to contend with the landing that goes from the main floor to the second floor. And it created a bulkhead that bumped into the kitchen. So we decided to wrap the cabinetry around this wall and what it does is it completely disguises that bulkhead. It's like it never happened. And it also gives fabulous storage for dry goods and pantry supplies right where you need it most. And you'll see it creates a little, almost like a little hidden nook where you could put countertop appliances, etc. I like my counters pretty clean, but you know, you can tuck whatever you want back there. We've also got a little nook here for favorite cookbooks to be kept close at hand. And there's great prep space on either side of the range here. What's neat about the range wall is we ended up having it flanked by full height pantries. In my view, you can never have enough full height pantries because they are the most handy storage, whether it's dry goods, dishes, glassware, you name it. I'm always looking to balance that. And we didn't sacrifice any counter space because everywhere that we put a full height pantry, otherwise would have just had really shallow counter space. And so I prioritized having long, big runs rather than U-shaped wraparound counters. The U-shaped wraparound isn't really my favorite thing. I like straight counters, just in case you ever wondered. In the redesign of this kitchen, 
One of the things that became really important was thinking about sight lines, thinking about you're gonna walk in the front door and you're gonna be looking right into the kitchen. There is no door to close. So from the entry of the home, what are you gonna see? Well, you're gonna see a wall of full height pantries. But how do we make that interesting? Well, a little detail that I designed years ago for our own kitchen at home was to put a little display shelf just above the top of the first set of pantry doors and illuminate it with light and make this a really beautiful spot for special objects. Things that are usable, functional, but also gorgeous. So that's what I did here and I, I, th I think it works, right? Hopefully you think it works. Now we have the back section and some of you are gonna be saying, Sarah, the fridge is not in a triangle. Well, it is actually in a triangle because the range is here, the sink is here, and the fridge is here. The fridge, I just shifted over a tiny bit to be in the back section of the kitchen. Literally, you can reach from the refrigerator to the peninsula counter, so don't worry, it's not too far away. It actually has ended up in the sweet spot because it's right in the middle and it's in a place that everybody can circulate around. So easy for unpacking groceries, easy for people to self-serve whatever they want from the fridge, and easy whether you're working at the bar sink or at the main sink. So this is function, 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 and thinking about flexible solutions that really work. Now, in the back part of the kitchen, I think <laughs> it's funny because I designed this kitchen with the goal in mind that my client would be able to make the most delicious everything that she always makes because she's such a great cook. But the funny thing is, whenever I come, I find my clients gravitate. It's like a magnet, this bistro table and chairs at the back of the kitchen. And it makes me so happy because we really reprogrammed this to make this kitchen feel like it had a lounge in it. And so this is where they lounge. They have coffee, breakfast, a glass of wine, just sit in the sunlight. This is a south facing bay window, so the light streams in. When you look at the banquette here, this is a little detail. If you're thinking that you want to do a built-in banquette, I have a little suggestion for you. What I like to do, instead of getting just a loose cushion that tends to slide all over the place and curl up at the corners, I get a piece of plywood. I get the carpenters on site during the renovation to cut a piece of plywood to the size of the window. Less you know, quarter of an inch, and then I take it and I have it upholstered. So this is a tightly upholstered surface. I've upholstered it with a soft gray leather. And what this means is it never shifts around. It's durable, wipeable, comfortable, practical, and pretty. So what we have here is we have the little banquette area with cushions so that you can, you know, you could actually four people could have cozy dining here. And then I prioritized two comfortable chairs. So instead of kitchen chairs that are wood and uncomfortable, these are lounge chairs. And this is my scoop chair. I'm very partial to this chair. It has some mid-century inspiration, but is designed for comfort, lounging, and I would say lingering. Why well, yes, I would love a glass of wine, right? That's kind of the vibe here. So in this area, we've got cookbooks, bar fridge, bar sink, a bar dishwasher. A dishwasher drawer is a must for me in any house where people love to entertain. I always encourage my clients to install a bar drawer dishwasher if possible, if budget allows for it, because it is so handy when entertaining to have that second dishwasher. So this really takes the pressure off the main prep area of the kitchen. In the bar area also we played around with textured glass. So what you see here is this is reeded glass and so it has a fluted detail on the inside and what this does is it creates translucency so you can get a glimpse of what's inside but it also creates a softened sight line. All the decisions we made here were about how do you take a traditional home and how do you make it feel fresh, new, contemporary, designed for today, but not out of place with all the character you want to keep. How do you make that work for the kitchen? Well, I used a narrow shaker profile door. 
This is a one inch shaker profile, which really is a more contemporary look. And then we've accented it all with modern hardware. So look at this satin brass finish. It is the simplest of pulls, the most streamlined of knobs, and everything in here feels good. If a kitchen just looks good, but doesn't feel good and doesn't function well, well, then it doesn't work. So everything that I do is about trying to figure out how do we get the most? How do we max out every single bit of potential? And in this case, I'd say there's nothing more for me to do, which means it must be time for me to show you another room. Want to make sure you never miss an episode? Make sure you hit the button to subscribe and don't forget to click the bell for notifications and you'll be able to follow us on our design life journey each and every day.